one star. These guys gave the Black Hills of South Dakota, Mount Rushmore, Crazy Horse, Custer State Park, Deadwood, and the Badlands one stinking star. Hey everybody, it's Tristan Eamon with Mindful Living Realty, a realtor right here in Rapid City, South Dakota, the gateway to the Black Hills. Today we're going to check out the one star reviews of our area and see what people have to say. First of all, let's talk about the Black Hills in general. This one, the one star, South Dakota is desolate. This person probably just drove from Sioux Falls to Rapid City along I-90, and they thought that was desolate. They should go north from Rapid City to North Dakota. You'll see maybe six cars along the way. Yes, we've got under a million people in the entire state of South Dakota combined. Take a look at this one from five years ago. That was 2019, and this makes sense. It was flooded, cold, and wet, full of mud, and there was no service. Yeah, that was 2019. We had a lot of water back then. And it's too bad that the National Forest Service didn't do something about the weather to make it perfect for everybody, right? And yes, when you get into certain parts of the Black Hills, you have no cell service. This is a good thing. When you go out to the Black Hills, there's a chance to be in nature, to get away from the world, to get away from social media. Enjoy life without your phone. We got lost. GPS sent us to the middle of nowhere. We did see buffalo and deer. GPS is a good thing. It can be a good thing. But sometimes it's not always accurate in the Black Hills because that thinks a road isn't a road. Ah, Mount Rushmore. What could be so bad about the national monument that South Dakota is known for? Apparently, 10 bucks. This is one of the most common complaints about Mount Rushmore National Monument, that it takes 10 bucks to park. I've been in the area since 1990. And let me tell you, back in those days, it was more of a Black Hills monument. I had these two like six foot black tar paths with the flags along the side as you walked up to the Mount Rushmore area. And if you're up there now, there'll be a spot that says it's the old viewing platform. That's it, that's as far as you got. And the parking lot was just a flat surface. There was no extra parking other than that. About 2000, they decided to make it more monumental and they made it into what it is today. With the millions and millions of people that are coming to the park annually, the parking ramp needed to be built so that you could actually find parking. So paying 10 bucks that you can park is not really a big deal. And yes, you can't take your dog to Mount Rushmore. There are millions and millions and millions of people that come here every year, as I alluded to. Can you imagine everybody bringing their dog to this area with all the people around? What chaos would ensue? I know you love your dogs, but leave them in the car. Except for your service dog, which of course is welcome at Mount Rushmore. Point number three. No, you can't use your national park's annual pass here. Mount Rushmore is a national monument, not a national park. So you can't use your national park pass to gain access or get free parking here at Mount Rushmore. It's a different thing altogether. The fourth point, you can just see it from the road. And this is a true story. As you're driving, you can see it from the road, you can take pictures. But there is something really cool about being able to walk up the promenade through the flags and be able to experience it right up close. Plus, you gotta stop for the monument ice cream. In addition, there's the presidential walk, which is a walk that takes you even closer to the faces, the sculpture studio, and the gift shop. This review kind of covers all the bases. Here it is, so you don't have to waste your time. Annual park pass doesn't work here. The $10 fee is a parking fee that you must pay. Dogs are only allowed up the columns up to the beginning of Mount Rushmore. Most people spend maybe 10 minutes here. That's a dollar a minute. Cool monument, cool drive. You can see it on the drive up if you're coming from the town of Keystone. I think the most interesting part about it is how this should be free and not a ripoff. Parking is crazy here. This guy's my favorite though. I drove 12 hours to see the Great Mount Rushmore. Every stop I made along the way was followed by an hour of my wife shopping in a convenience store. We ended up falling super behind on our timing. By the time we got up to Mount Rushmore, a storm had moved in and we were not able to see the faces. I asked the staff to remove the fogs so I could see the faces. They wouldn't help out at all. I also had to eat my father's day meal at the Mount Rushmore Cafe due to all the local restaurants being full. I was hopeful that the employees would remove the fog by the following morning. Lo and behold, it got worse. The employees added rain to the fog. Horrible experience. As a local, I've been to Mount Rushmore many times as I have taken visitors there and I still really enjoy the walking up to see the faces and walking around. And while you can see it from the road, there's nothing like getting up close and personal to this American iconic monument. Ah, crazy horse. You either love it or you hate it. Point number one, it's a little spendy. $30 entrance fee okay, compared to Mount Rushmore, that's expensive. But this only includes the museum and parking. At least the museum is clean and nice, but not worth the price. 
Another four bucks for the bus to get you closer to the memorial, but 125 bucks just go up to see the mountain. Sorry, I only see a ripoff. Don't support this. It's been under construction forever, it seems like. This place has been under construction for decades, and it seems the 4.3 Google rating is misleading, and the money they collect is not worth anything for the show or talk. The mountain is being sculpted for decades, and it will take decades more to complete. Entry fee, and, and then again, we talk about the entry fee. Please waive these charges until the structure is completed. It could be a while. However, if you want to get up close and personal to Crazy Horse, there's a Volksmox that happens in the fall and spring where you walk up and you actually get to take pictures right in front of the nose. That's something I've thought about doing, but just haven't got organized enough to do it. Now we're on to Custer State Park, which is South Dakota State Park, not the Black Hills National Forest, and not an American National Park. So it costs 20 bucks. Unfortunately, my experience here wasn't as exciting as other tourists. I've heard from many that this park was much worth visiting and breathtaking. However, this park was a complete waste of time, money, and gas. I wish to see animals and all I saw was one buffalo. The scenery wasn't even that nice and $20 and three hours of wasting time. I would pay at most 10. I do not recommend this place. Okay, Custer State Park is more than the wildlife loop. And it's a huge park with acres and acres and acres of land. I'm so sorry that the rangers don't make the buffalo stand right where you can drive by for your amusement. It's a free range park. They're gonna go wherever they wanna go. Plus, if all you're doing is going to Custer State Park to see the wildlife loop, you've missed out on so much. Sylvan Lake, Needles Highway, Stockade Lake, there's a bunch of other really pretty lakes. So many different hikes and places to explore in Custer State Park. 20 bucks is worth it, but you gotta go explore. Similar story here. Do not drive through Custer State Park. A waste of two hours. Seeing one buffalo, nothing out there. Spend your time elsewhere. I was in 2013. We've seen a lot of more buffalo. Not no more. Hope they fix the place. And apparently, this place is not pretty enough and you got too much traffic. So go to Yellowstone and Tetons because I'm sure they'll have less traffic. And now we've got Historic Deadwood, which, you know, they got some gambling going on. But this reviewer, that's all they saw. It's all just tacky casinos with video game screens, not family friendly, nothing to do or see, actively struggled to even find something to eat. I'm not sure what Deadwood they were in. Maybe they should have come when an event was going on, but there are a lot of things to go do and see in Deadwood if you know where to look. We have really enjoyed old west towns like Tombstone and Jerome, Arizona, so we're looking forward to historic Deadwood. Unfortunately, it turned out to be disappointed filled with the casinos and cheap souvenir shops. No charm at all and very little historical interest. This is kind of accurate if you're looking for that old, old west kind of town experience. Deadwood is a casino town. It's going to be a little more modern because that's where people want to be to do their gambling and their casinoing. The history is all around. You just got to find it amongst the casinos. Visit on a Saturday late afternoon expecting to walk through a historic town, go into shops, stop for something to eat, etc. Unfortunately, every place seemed like a saloon with gambling. Worse yet, because they didn't allow smoking inside, everyone is standing on the third floor smoking. Shops were incredibly tackly, too many inebriated people. That's what happens when you allow gambling in one little town. Next up, the Badlands. Many people that I've talked to coming through have mentioned that the Badlands were one of their favorite places to visit because it was so unique. Apparently, not everybody thinks that way. Too hot and dry. It was super sandy too. All the rocks were very distracting. Too many wild animals and I didn't feel safe because the park had so few people in it. It is also big and takes a long time to drive around. Would not recommend. I mean, there's a reason it's called the Badlands, right? And it's like in the middle of South Dakota, which is desolate, as we've already established. So were you expecting a Starbucks on the corner or what? Not dog friendly. Not many trails and no water stations outside of the visitor station. They could make this park so much better. Again, Badlands, wilderness. That's why you're supposed to hike with your own water? The views did not impress us very much. The area looked like huge piles of dusty concrete. The trails were a little treacherous since the ground was gravelly and uneven. Consider this a stop by rather than a destination. Many other national parks out west have far body hiking and more beautiful views. I mean, I, I just don't know what to say anymore. And finally, you gotta appreciate some of the people that are having a little bit of fun at the expense of the Black Hills. I've been in this forest for years. I can't find any escape. The trees keep going, do not recommend. I hear voices. There you have it. Not everybody loves everything, I guess. The Black Hills and surrounding attractions, I guess, aren't everybody's cup of tea. I hope you enjoyed this video and then you realize that my snark along with some of the comments was all in good fun. If you love this video, make sure you check out this playlist 
of our wonderful Black Hills Playground and maybe get you feeling a little bit better about some of those one stars. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. And remember, love where you live.